Hi, I am Fernando Campos and today I am going to talk about the shrublands and more specifically about the chaparrals that is a type of shrubland. But before we move on to talk about that, first we need to define these three concepts. Biosphere, ecosystems and biomes. So what are these three concepts? Well, the biosphere are the regions of the surface, atmosphere and hydrosphere of the earth occupied by all kinds of living organisms. An ecosystem is a biological community of interacting organisms with their physical environment. And a biome is a, is a space in nature that can vary depending on the climate, temperature and weather that have relations and interactions between biotic and abiotic factors. So how does these things relate each other? Well, the relationship that these three levels of ecology have is that they are all connected because if we put together all the ecosystems and biomes of the planet together, we form a biosphere and then they all do have uh, to do with different populations and communities of species interacting and adapting according to their habitat with its abiotic and biotic factors. Now, a shrubland is a plant community characterized by vegetation dominated by shrubs, hence its name. Um, it is often including grasses and herbs. Shrublands may either occur naturally or be the results of human activity. This biome can be found in Southern California, Chile, Mexico, areas surrounding the Mediterranean Sea, and southwest parts of Africa and Australia. And it only covers the 14.18% of the surface of the Earth, and the chaparrals only the 2%. Now, let's talk about the precipitation of the shrublands. So, the average precipitation of a shrubland is about 200 to 1000 millimeters of rain per year. As you can see in this graph, it shows the changes of precipitation per month in a year. So, in January, the precipitation is about 41 or 42 millimeters. In February, it increases and is about 58 or 59 millimeters. In March, it increases a little bit and it's about 60 millimeters. And this is the maximum of precipitation a shrubland um, can get because then in April it decreases a lot down to 3 millimeters. In May, also, it decreases down to 18 or 19 millimeters. In June, the line stabilizes until October, that it increases up to 24 or 25 millimeters. In November, it also increases up to 39 millimeters. And at last, in December, it decreases a little down to 37 or 38 millimeters of precipitation. Now, let's talk about the flora and the fauna of the chaparrals. Some common plants in the chaparrals include the poison oak, shrubs, obviously, chamise, cacti, oak trees like, like the blue oak, coyote brush, pines, etc. And some of the chaparrals from Australia mainly consist of eucalyptus trees. Some animals include the acorn woodpecker, jackrabbits, mule deer, coyotes, pumas, bobcats, grey foxes, alligator lizards, praying mantis, horned toads, etc. Now I will talk about of one example of a trophic food web in the chaparrals. This food web consists on first the producers that are the photosynthetic organisms like the blue oak, coyote brush and the fairy duster. Then the primary consumers that include the small rodents, insects, jackrabbits and some birds including the cactus wren that is a native bird of the California chaparral. 
Then, the secondary and tertiary consumers include the, the grey fox, uh, bobcats and pumas. And at last, the decomposers include the basic fungi and bacteria. Now, I will talk about some animals and plant adaptations to this environment. Like the birds. They have adapted to hot and dry climates and temperatures. And these animals survive with the use of very little water, like in the case of the cactus wren. Also, some plants have adapted to hot temperatures by having leaves with a hairy texture designed to hold water and use it efficiently, by having a root system designed to get as much water as possible like in the case of the blue oak. Also, some plants in this biome have leaves that are made from highly flammable materials. Some plants in this biome have adapted to re even resist these intense heat and fires, like the coyote brush that has flame retardant chemicals, makeup and flame retardant leaves. And well, my message here is that we have to conserve our natural environments because they are all important for us and for the earth, and because of us, all and the industrial revolution, now the planet is suffering. So I invite you to take care of the biodiversity of this beautiful planet. Because currently the California chaparral is disappearing due to urbanization and development. And, this occur and as this occurs, the cactus rain is continuously losing its habitat. So please, please help me make a change in this planet and help me to take care of it.